Now I want to set up a simple UI to uh, create and join a rooms. I think to start, I'm just going to set one up to create a room and uh, list current rooms as well. So to do that, I'm going to make a new scene. Where are you at? Here we go. I'm going to call it uh, room lobby. I'll just call it, I'll just call it rooms. And I'm going to get rid of my sample scene. Open up rooms. And I'm going to create a new game object. I'm going to call it canvases. I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call it overlay canvases. And then I'm going to go to UI and then choose canvas. And actually I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep the event system at the top of the canvases object here. So I'm going to change the canvas scaler to scale its screen size. I'll set it 1920 by 1080. Uh, match width by height as default and 0.05. I'm going to rename the canvas object to create or join room. And I'm going to put actually create or join room canvas. And then I'm going to create a new object. I'm just going to call it background where I will add a raw image. I'm going to scale it through the entire screen by clicking the bottom right stretch and holding alt and clicking it again. Let's set it to, uh, let's go with like a bright orange. Yeah, that'd be fine. Now I need the create side, so I'm going to create empty, create room, and I need, uh, I need an input box for sure. I don't have Text Mesh Pro installed despite what you see here. Ordinarily I'd be using it, um, but I'm going to be using Unity default components. So if you're using Text Mesh Pro, feel free to set yours up accordingly. So I added an input field to start. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. So let me zoom in here some. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. I'm going to resize it so I can actually see what's going on there. And I'm going to select the placeholder and the text field, and I will use best fit, which is like auto size on Text Mesh Pro. And I'm going to aim for a hundred in size. That should be fine. And uh, input field, I'm going to rename it to rum name input. And now I need to add another. And I'm going to call this um, create button. I'll add another raw image and I'm going to add a button component to it. And I'm just going to set this up over here and then just stretch it out. Make it a little bit smaller, I think. There we go. Now I'm going to add a uh, text component like, like before here in the input. So that way I can just add some labels to it. I'm just going to make it so it doesn't touch the edges and I'm going to set it to center. I'm going to put create room. And again, I'm going to use best fit and I'm going to try to target like 100, 100 or so. You probably won't need it that big. Um, use whatever works for you. Just keep in mind on mobile devices, the font might seem a little uh, smaller than you would expect. Okay, so I think I'm going to actually um, center these two objects horizontally on the X. And then I'm just going to move the create room object over a little. There we go. I'm going to save my changes. And I'm going to do something similar uh, for the room listings. So I'm going to choose the canvas object here up top, the create or join room canvas, create empty. I'm going to call it room listings. And in this, I'm going to make a scroll view. So under UI scroll view. And uh, I'm just going to move it up over here so it's fairly close to the original. I'm going to delete the horizontal scroll bar because I don't need that. And after you delete your, your scroll bars, if you do choose to delete them, actually I'll show you here, I'm going to restart it real quick. So I'm going to create a new scroll view. And then I'm going to delete my uh, horizontal again. 
when I click the scroll view, you notice how it says missing under the horizontal and how the vertical doesn't go all the way to the bottom. To fix that, you just have to go to this little right circle of whichever one you deleted, click it, and then choose none. And then your viewport will be all the way to the bottom. The scroll bar might not update automatically. You may have to manually adjust that, so just keep that in mind. But you'll know it's working when the viewport takes up all the space you expect it to. So I'm going to resize the entire scroll view to right about here. This should be fine. And under the viewport and content, I'm going to have the rooms list vertically. So I'm going to need a vertical layout group to do so. And I'm going to have them start in the upper center. And now I need to make an object for that. So I'm going to make a new object under content. This is what's going to populate the list. And uh, this is just going to be called room listing. And I need to add a layout element component so it recognizes that it's part of a layout group. I'm going to have it have uh, flexible width. And now I just need to fill it out. So I'm going to also put in a raw image and um, I think I'm going to just stretch it out here. I'm going to have it fill up most of it just like that. And now I need to add a text component again on the room listing so that we can show the name of our room. So like before I'm just going to stretch it all the way out and then shrink in the sides a little bit just so the text doesn't sit right on the side. I know on Text Mesh Pro it has margins. This probably has it too. Um, I just don't know where it's at right away because I never use this component. So going back to best fit, again I'm going to target, you know, I'm going to target probably, let's just say like 70. It's probably huge, but it's alright. It doesn't matter. Just for an example. Now I'm just going to make sure it works. So I'm going to select my room listing and duplicate it with Control or Command D. I'm going to duplicate it. Oh, you see it looks like it's that shouldn't be there. Um, so what I have to actually do is I'm back to one listing and I'm going to select my content. And then I'm going to add content size fitter. And I'm going to set the vertical fit to preferred size. And you saw it bounced up to the top. So now if I select room listing again and duplicate, there we go. We should be good. Scroll bar is going up. Let me just hit play to make sure I can actually scroll up and down. Okay, so it is scrolling up and down, but I forgot to uncheck horizontal scrolling. So I just need to do that real quick. I'm going to test it in play mode, then reset it once I'm out of play mode. Okay, so that's working. So I'm going to hit stop. And again, uncheck horizontal scrolling so it only goes up and down. I'm just going to make sure this fits on various resolutions. Looks like it is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this. Um, I already have a folder structure made up here. I'm going to delete it though. I did that earlier in my spare time. So under the assets folder, I'm going to right click, create folder, call it prefabs. I'm going to make a new folder main menu because this is prefabs for the main menu scene. And then I'm going to make another one called UI. And I'm just going to drop in room listing under UI. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of the extras here. I'm just going to keep the first one there kind of as a reminder what it might look like. So the room listing UI is set up. What you'll ultimately do is you'll, if you want to uh, create a room, you will fill out the text here. So if I click here and type, you can say fill out the text and hit create room and it would do so. And then here's where rooms that already exist will appear. One thing I think I'll want that we'll probably be using later in the videos is having a little uh, debug UI type, like a little little message box we can pop up and down that will show us text messages of our game. That way, when we're in builds, uh, we can see we can see what's going on pretty easily without having to rely on a developer build, or um, especially on Android because that console is a bit finicky to find on Android and it's harder to read. Um, debug messages on, on mobile in general. So we'll go ahead and set that up in the next video.